Hello and welcome to Theme Park Information. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe for more content. In today's show we're going to be doing a review for Islands of Adventure. Uh, now this is part of the uh, Universal Resort, uh, which I've already kind of done it as an overview. I'm now going to do each of the individual parks. Uh, so do look out for a movie park one coming in the near future. Uh, now this is a park which is extremely uh, clean, tidy, well presented, very photogenic. It has lots of good IPs uh, like Harry Potter and like Jurassic World slash park, depending on how you want to look at it. Uh, has some extremely good roller coasters in terms of a coaster. Has some great dark rides like Amazing Spider-Man and stuff like that. Uh, and generally it's just a really premier high-end park. Uh, there are some downsides to it, uh, but most of it is really positive. Uh, let's, let's go for the downsides just to get them out of the way. Uh, so yeah, this park sadly where it is premier is really expensive. You're looking at several hundred pounds for tickets. Fast Pass is around like over a hundred dollars, possibly up to like 250, I think was what we would have been quoted if we'd used it for one of the days. Uh, you're going to have lockers everywhere. Thankfully, kind of a positive, they are usually included in the price and you use your park ticket uh, to utilize them. So that is kind of, it's irritating, but it does help operations and throughput and it is at least included in the price of the ticket. So there is that. Uh, the park can seem very crowded and very busy, uh, even though they do have wide pathways and lots of ways to get around. Obviously, it just has such a large number of visitors, it can seem to be a bit chock-a-block sometimes, which isn't great. Uh, not terrible, and not the park's fault. They can't help it if people ar arrive and to the park. Uh, I also do feel that... <sighs> This park probably does need a few more thrilling attractions, especially in the sort of like the thrill ride department. They have some really good coasters, uh, but other than like uh, Doom's Drop Tower, they don't really have anything else. I think something like maybe like something like a pendulum ride or uh, Swim and Swing would do really well just to help balance it out. And especially with that water with the, the large lake, doing it over that would be really cool and, and add to the photogenicness of the park. Uh, right, so positives. Uh, food, really good, efficient, really quick, good size and portions as well. The park was extremely clean, tidy, well presented, looked amazing, and it's pretty easy to navigate. There is a nice variety of rides. You have things like Velocicoaster and Hagrid's, which are both really fantastic. But then you also, I'd say, you have like, you know, lots of dark rides and stuff like that, including one of the worst dark rides ever in uh, King Kong. My God, the facade of that stuff is amazing. It looks so good. The ride mechanics and system is dreadful. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, that needs to be bulldozed so badly. Or just the ride system should just be replaced and it should just be like an indoor coaster or something. Massively improve it if, if they did that. Uh, I'd say this is a park which has started to really develop uh, over the last few years as well. They've been adding lots of new stuff and attractions, which is brilliant. Uh, staff are really good and friendly. I think the main thing for my main review of the whole park uh, as, a, like a, as, a, as a visit was whether or not it was value for money because it is expensive. And if I was to take that out of the equation, this park is absolutely worth visiting. It's fun. It's good fun. Uh, obviously, you do have some slight long lines, but again, it is a busy, popular park, but it is well worth doing. It is really nice being in it. Very difficult to criticise any sort of like ride operation or like throughput or like the lack of capacity or things being broken or unkept or effects not working. It just seems that they're absolutely on their game when it comes to this park. And yeah, for a final score, I'd probably give it like an 8.5 out of 10. I think somewhere like Europa Park would be slightly better or Port Aventura, I, I prefer. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's certainly right out there. Well worth visiting. Anyway, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and I'll catch you guys on the next one.